Notice carefully these words. Hebrew scholars tell us that this expression, to call on the name, signifies an intense relationship of prayer and worship. It's the way of entering into a relationship with a God through prayer and worship. And so in Scripture, when a person wants to enter into a relationship with God, they call on the name of Yahweh. Now what's so amazing is that when we come to the New Testament, the name Yahweh, translated into Greek as Lord, is the name Jesus is given to indicate that not only is he Yahweh in human flesh, but also he's our Savior. He's the one we need to connect with God through him. This little tagline in the Old Testament was uh, clearly the way people connected with God. Let me just give you a few examples. In Psalm 116, verse 17, the uh, psalm writer says, I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of Yahweh. Look at another one. For then I will restore pure speech to the peoples so that all of them may call on the name of Yahweh and serve him with a single purpose. That's Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. And then a very special one I want you to remember is Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Everyone who calls on the name of Yahweh will be saved. Now, when you come into the New Testament, Jesus is the way you call on the name of Yahweh. When you enter into a relationship with God, you call on the name of the Lord. Notice Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Paul writes, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Remember, now we're talking in Greek, so it uses the word Lord instead of Yahweh. Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Well, how do we know that he really means Lord in the highest sense? Well, we go down just a couple sentences to verse 13, and notice what he quotes here. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's a quotation right from Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And so Paul is equating Jesus with Yahweh. 